Okay, so great news. We now have Chrome OS or OpenFide on the Raspberry Pi 5. Thanks to Tom Turchinbaugh for letting me know. Let's have a look at it. So I've covered OpenFide and FideOS a lot on the Raspberry Pi 4 and it's one of the best operating systems if you just want a simple, easy to use operating system. So if I press the Windows key, you can see it shows all the apps. Because I've logged in before, some of these are populated. So Canvas Rider always shows up on a Chromebook for me just because uh, it's a game that I play uh, and, it, and it's always there. So if I click on Terminal, uh, this is a really interesting thing about OpenFide or Chrome OS now. So we click on Setup. What it will do is it will take some of the space, and this is on a 60 gig SSD drive, uh, for Linux. So if I turn it on, and I've shown this in more detail on Pi 4, hit Next, pop in a username, and you can see it says recommended 10 gig. I'll go with 15 as this is a 60 gig drive. Or thereabouts, 15.7, that'll do. And that'll install Linux. And you can see now it's come up with a terminal. So if I was to install something, say sudo apt install xmoto, and don't worry, I did say this was a really easy operating system, and it is. Uh, if you're not used to Linux, obviously, you might want to skip past this bit. So it should be saying the following packages were installed and press yes, but I can't see a yes there. Oh, it is trying to do something. So press yes and enter. You can see it's given, come up with some graphical glitches, which I haven't had on Pi 4. This has only just come out on Pi 5. So you can see it's installing. It'd be interesting to see how, uh, if the game works and so on. And you can multitask. So while, while it's using Linux, you can basically go down and you can launch something else. So if I wanted to check my email or check the files, the way it works with files is it really just gives you a, a downloads folder and once you've installed the Linux environment it also gives you access to the Linux folders in there as well so you can copy things from Chrome OS into Linux and vice versa which is pretty cool. This is just a USB stick I've got plugged in which has got a load of games and things on it but not really for this video it's just because I leave it in my USB hub all the time so let's close that down and you can see the game has nearly installed. And you could install something like LibreOffice if you want an offline office system. But you can obviously use Google Docs as well because it's running Chrome OS or a, a version of it. Here we are, still getting a few little graphical glitches. So that's installed. If I now go down to the terminal here, you can see Xmoto has shown up with a different logo, but it's there. Okay, so maybe the Linux bit <laughs> isn't ready yet because that's, that's a bit weird. Yeah, it's not letting me select. Okay, right, I'm going to close that. Yeah, something's, something's, okay, something's definitely wrong. I might try it just one more time. Uh, so, Xmoto. The way it works as well is with Linux apps, ah, this is working, that. Uh, they just work as if they were an app installed on like a Windows computer or a Mac. So, use profile. Oh, it might be working now. Maybe it just needed uh, to be started and then restarted. So let's go classical monkey boogie and just check and you can see that that's working and that's working at full speed. Oh dear, I'm not going to save that. Or maybe. Oh yeah, I meant that. Uh, so you can see that's working. Android support is working as well, although I'm finding that I can't get any of my controllers to work. So I've tried a Stadia controller, a wired Xbox 360 controller and you can see I've got my Xbox One controller paired to this. Can't get any of the apps to recognize it. So if I launch something like PPSSPP, it doesn't let me configure the controller. It seems to launch and everything nice and quick. But uh, yeah, when I go into controls, it won't let me map it. So let's quit out of that and just show you that uh, you can install APK. So this is the app tide store. And uh, I sh probably showed that in my previous Chromium or open fide video, I'll put a link to that on the Pi 4. Uh, but if we do a search, uh, what can we use with mouse and keyboard? Cut the rope will do. So cut the rope two, and let's install that. And you can see it will download and install just as if it was an Android phone. I've also got the uh, APK Pure App Store on here, 
which shows up like a phone interface but can do something very similar and let me install Android apps. No Google Play support, I don't think it open FIDE still. You can get with FIDE OS which is the paid for version. Okay, so let's hit install and open. And it comes up as if it's a mobile phone. Some apps are different on Android. So if I swipe, there you go. That's all working. Obviously a very simple Android game, but nice to see it working. If I had this on a touchscreen, the touchscreen has always worked for me with OpenFide before. But let's quit out of that and show a bit of the web browser. So this is the Chrome web browser. And as you can see, I've got some tabs open at the moment. I've got a video which it's automatically starting to play. Let's just skip this advert. It doesn't seem to play any beyond 1080, the native resolution of my desktop. Uh, I'm not sure if it would do 4K at 30, but it won't do, uh, it doesn't like 60 FPS. So this is a 30 FPS, it's actually a 4K video, uh, but it only plays at 1080 maximum, but it's not dropping frames and it does seem to work nicely. If I quit out of that, in fact, if I pause it, you can see that while the video's up, we can still switch between open pages and the web browser performance as expected is really good. I expect this to get a lot better though as the Pi 5 is truly optimized because actually the Pi 4, I'm pretty sure the Pi 4 plays 1080 60 videos so actually is better performance than the Pi 5 version at the moment but this is the first version so uh, so no stress about that. Okay so I thought I'd map the keyboard for PSP and this is PSP running at two times resolution. It isn't great, the Pi 5 is capable of way, way more than this, and it's really hard to play on keyboard the way I've got it mapped, but at least it's working. So let's quit out of that, hopefully with A or S, so there we go, and I can probably back out, yeah, and exit. So unfortunately, as an operating system, this isn't ready on the Pi 5 yet. And I know it runs great on the Pi 4 because I've used it loads on the Pi 4. I also use it on the Orange Pi 5. I also use it on the Fide Tab Duo. And it's really good on that as an operating system because I like the way you can switch between Linux apps and Android apps uh, and also have the full desktop browser. It's a really nice combination. So yeah, watch this space. I'll definitely review it again when we get a newer version, but this version isn't quite ready yet. Uh, it supports things like remote desktop uh, in Chrome OS. And we also have this uh, intriguing open AI bit, which I don't actually know anything about, but I unfortunately I haven't got time to investigate this because this is just to get another video out of Christmas, but also let people know that this is available. So if you're looking for it, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but if you do a search for OpenFide and GitHub, then you'll find it. And if you look for the Raspberry Pi 5 version, Project RPI 5, I use this one, OpenFide. And if we scroll down, there's the latest version, 11 hours ago. And you're just downloading this version and then use Raspberry Pi Imager to write it to either an SD card or USB. I'm using it on an SSD, I didn't have to do any changes, it just works on it. But as I say, not quite ready yet, but watch this space. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching, please like and subscribe.